Well, there it is, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drink salute to Jimmy Buffett. Um, I think at the top of this episode, I think it'll be eight, but I can't manage eight. Jimmy, wherever you're at, I'm drunk. Smile upon me. I'm God's own drunk. That's weird. <laughs> oh, an eight drink, an eight drink salute. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say there, honestly. It sucks, I am bummed. I immediately wanted to jump in my car and drive to Key West. There was an incredible second line that ran through the entire island and I am remiss for not being there. I love it down there. I try to get down there as often and for as long as I possibly can, but let's start this thing right. Now, despite being very closely associated with a margarita, Jimmy has revealed in later interviews that, you know, they're just too sweet for him. He doesn't really drink them anymore. So lately he's been drinking just uh, tequila on the rocks with a twist of lime. So I'm gonna have a tequila on the rocks with a twist of lime. <laughs> We're gonna add two ounces of tequila. I'm using a uh, Reposado. This is La Gratona. Plenty of ice cubes because frankly, tequila on the rocks isn't exactly my drink. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to it getting a little watered down and a twist of lime. And uh, in this kind of a case, I think what they mean, you know, this is what they mean, a squeeze of a lime wedge, even though a twist is really something like that. And uh, there's the Jimmy. Nothing wrong with that at all. A fine way to enjoy a glass of tequila, actually. But there is a recipe that's been floating around for many years for Jimmy's margarita. It is a blender margarita. I think that this is the recipe he gave out when people asked him for a recipe. I don't think this was actually his preferred recipe. This is the Margaritaville margarita. I don't think it's the one they serve at the Margaritaville restaurants, but it is the drink that you should associate with the cocktail in the song, I think. So Jimmy's notes say to squeeze six lime wedges into the blender. That's very imprecise. I mean, this is imprecise too. We're gonna do the juice of a lime. I think that's about the same thing as six wedges. In fact, it's maybe slightly more than the juice in six wedges, which is also fine. Next, I need two and a half ounces of Rose's lime juice. This is not an ingredient I use a lot of, but it does have its merits. There we go, two and a half ounces. I should probably point out that this recipe is being doubled. Do you know you gotta give the blender something to grab onto? So this is a double. We want two splashes of Curacao. One, two, splashes. That's the way the measurements are described. That's the way we're gonna do them today. We're off splashes. We're back on to ounces. We want one ounce of Cointreau. Is it the same thing as dry curacao? Absolutely not. This is much tartar. All right. This recipe specifically calls for Cuervo silver. So we're gonna do one ounce of Cuervo silver. If you heard that seal breaking, that's because I don't ever keep this in my house. I had to buy it just for this. <laughs> and now we want four ounces of Cuervo gold. So we've got our booze in the blender. Now we need to get some ice so that it will render the concoction that helps me hang on. Okay, I don't know. I might drop a lot of lyrics into this episode. Greg, you have a blender. Why are you cracking your ice in? Because blender blades are only so big and this just helps them do their job. There we go. Put that lid on there and blend it away. Put salt there, rub a lime. Pour your margarita. There we have the Buffett margarita. Let's give it a try. God damn, that's good. There is something just like so wonderfully delicious about a frozen margarita, man. That is something. This particular recipe really likes the salt. It's a textural thing too. I don't think that you get the same drink just by throwing salt like saline solution into the drink. I think you have to have the salted rim because you want that grit. You want that texture. It's a damn good drink. It's dangerous. Have I had better frozen margaritas? I have, I have, honestly but I'm not sending this one back. This one's fine. <laughs> it's great. I actually did a whole episode on frozen margaritas. I think this one is in there. I'm gonna put a link up there. If you're curious about more frozen margaritas and maybe the best frozen margarita I've ever had, it was made by Dave Arnold, his recipe. That's in that episode too. But this is fantastic. Let me tell you something. There are six frozen margaritas, I think, in that episode, but when you have no frozen margaritas, one is the best. That's a thinking thought. Jimmy said in an interview that he thought margaritas were too sweet, which is why he switched to something akin to this. But I understand that's the margarita Jimmy knew. 
I do wish he knew this margarita though, which is a classic margarita we're gonna make right now. And then that's it, we're not doing another margarita, it's all other drinks, but we gotta get the tequila out of the episode. We're doing it right now. So we're gonna start by taking our glass and we're going to salt the rim. And you know, the margarita glass, that thing with the little poop in its butt, I don't know. I don't know when that came into vogue, but traditionally margaritas were served in a coupe, like any other up cocktail of its time. It's a drink that dates back to at least Prohibition. I have seen some histories that say it comes from a little before Prohibition. At any rate, it's a drink that is perfectly well suited to this kind of glass. All right, so this drink is very simple. Start with one ounce of lime juice and, you know, could I wing it? Sure, you could too, but measuring never hurt anyone, right? Except for maybe your feelings, fellas. Oh! So we're gonna do one ounce of Cointreau. Boom. And two ounces of tequila. I like a Reposado. Typically this drink should have been, would be made with a Blanco. I like something that's a little bit more mellowed out. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. You can use whatever you want. I happen to have this Gratona, I think it's great. Two ounces of Reposado tequila. And there it is, one classic margarita. Ooh, it's so good, man. So the salt makes the drink taste sweeter by comparison, right? Like there's no sugar in this, except for maybe what's in the Cointreau, which isn't much. Because you go through that salt, almost everything tastes kind of sweet afterward. The drink is, by sour standards, what you experience is so mild, so easy. So I've heard that margarita is Spanish for daisy. I don't speak Spanish, but I believe that. And this is a drink that is a riff on the daisy, which is a pre-prohibition cocktail from forever ago. If that's true, this drink feels you know, metaphorically, like the petals of an opening flower. It's such a easy, gentle delivery mechanism for a couple shots of tequila. A real, oh my God, that's wonderful. I don't drink enough margaritas, which is not something a normal person would ever say or should say. <laughs> but damn, that's good. I hope Jimmy at least had one of these in his life. One truly classic margarita. I think he would have dug it, especially considering that he wanted his things less sweet, which I can relate to. The sugar in cocktails will make you feel awful. Obviously the alcohol will make you feel awful too. I don't know, man, that sugar really screws me up. My ears start throbbing, my face turns red. It's the sugar. It's a really powerful inflammatory agent for me. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, sugar is bad. This is a great drink though, a wonderful drink. Greg, you know, we're gonna have to be careful. We don't wanna get too drunk. We're gonna get into trouble. This episode could put us uh, right into the floor if we're not very careful. I'm not gonna be all that careful. There's a number of drinks that are strongly associated with Jimmy Buffett and his music, or in this case, Alan Jackson songs that are somehow also Jimmy Buffett songs. And we're talking about a hurricane and also Bob Dylan songs now that I think about it, but that in a very different context. I did a whole episode on it. It has a really kind of fabled history. And I do mean beyond it being five o'clock somewhere. As far as I can tell, it was first introduced, despite what anybody else will tell you, at the like 1936 World's Fair in New York, but it quickly became associated with New Orleans. Pat O'Brien's of course is the famous place to get a hurricane. And uh, from what I hear, the hurricane they serve there is um, not great, kind of like today's Singapore Sling. If you went down to Raffles and got their Singapore Sling, yeah, you could do better at home. So the thing about a hurricane is that traditionally it's made with a syrup called Fashionola. And that is where the mystery in this drink comes from, because what exactly is Fashionola? It's hard to divine. There's a company, I think it's Johnny English, believe it or not. All they make is Fashionola syrup, and it's like a garbagey syrup full of red dye number five and a bunch of other stuff. There are recipes online to approximate your own Fashionola. There are recipes for hurricanes that don't involve Fashionola. A lot of them lean into passion fruit. Certainly passion fruit is a component of Fashionola. I've heard people making it with grenadine or getting the color from grenadine. I don't think that's right. From what I understand, traditionally Fashionola syrup would have hibiscus in it. And there's a company, Cocktail and Sons, they make the Fashionola. It comes out seasonally. You can only buy, when I bought it, you can only buy six bottles at a time and I bought all six. This is the Fashionola to use, right? So let's make a hurricane now. Three quarters of an ounce for a single or an ounce and a half for a double as we are doing today on how to drink. Hey, boo boo, Yogi Bear. How many kids today know a Yogi Bear? Here's a question for you. Flintstones vitamins. Do kids know what the Flintstones are anymore? Should they know? Same thing now, we want ounce and a half of lime juice. I am feeling like I ran into an old chum with a bottle of rum. 
and stayed up talking the whole night. Now we wanna add our rum and I'm gonna go crazy because we're making a double. We're gonna do two ounces of the real McCoy, which I was just recently discovered because they sent me this bottle in the mail and I loved it. And uh, now we're gonna do two ounces of something Jamaican, a little Apple in the State signature blend. I'm gonna shake this with three ice cubes all cracked. That one went straight into my eyeball. It's kind of refreshing, I don't mind. Okay, here we go. We're gonna open pour, maybe with a gate when we need to. That's enough ice. Well, we just moved and I don't know where my little cocktail umbrellas went. And of course I had to shoot this episode sort of as fast as I could, so I don't have one. But what you should do is put a lime wedge or an orange wedge or something with a cherry on it and a cocktail umbrella at the top there that's blown out like it's been in a Cat 5 hurricane. That's what you should do. Um, this is a hurricane. I am opposed to the use of straws on most drinks. And I don't have any within reach. I think I'd be okay with a straw on this one, but you don't need it. So fucking good. Okay, this is, this is nothing like a margarita, as you would expect. It is fruity, tropical, tropical fruits. I have a piece of ice in my teeth. Citrus and floral, absolutely floral, unmistakably Florable. Florable? Floral. It has a sweetened roundness. It is balanced. It is an appropriately sweet drink. More sweet would be too sweet. Less sweet would be undersweet. This is the right amount of sweetness for this drink. This is such an approachable, tasty drink. And what kills me is it's a maligned drink. The hurricane you're gonna most likely get down in New Orleans is far sweeter, far more red than this. And it's just not necessary. This is already tourist friendly. That hibiscus, is it, it, it has such a layered, complicated flavor. You shouldn't give up on that. You should not let them take that away from you. It's a wonder of a drink. It belongs at a World's Fair. And as I say that, I realize that it is five o'clock somewhere. My boss, whom is me, is pushing me over the limit. If ever there was a drink worth quitting early, I'm laughing because the answer is any drink. Any drink is worth quitting work early. Work, work is, a, is scam. a scam. Do as little of it as, as you can get away. As you can get away. Uh, but if ever there was a drink worth quitting work early over, here it is, the hurricane. So I was looking for uh, Jimmy Buffett drinks in preparation for this video, and I've been kind of like searching every interview I can find and any information I could get access to. I found, I think it was in Men's Health or Men's Journal, reference to a thing that he makes with coconut water and rum, and it sounded really good. And it starts with two parts coconut water. This looks very nice in a glass bottle, but in truth, it is just the coconut water they sold at my grocery store put into a glass bottle for presentational purposes. So we're gonna start with four ounces of coconut water. We want one ounce of lime juice and uh, two ounces of, he says, dark rum. So two ounces of Hamilton 86. Big ice cube, cracked ice. All right, we're gonna do an open pour. And there it is, Jimmy's coconut and rum thing. You know, it's not bad. I don't really taste the coconut in this. Be a little. And I know it sounds like Jimmy was trying to avoid Simple, but I think like half an ounce to three quarters of an ounce of simple is really gonna help this drink a lot. Because coconut, you expect it to be kind of sweet. Well, I'm not gonna lie, this is not my favorite drink. It's really kind of lacking. The thing about coconut water is it can't stand up in the face of rum. Now, we start throwing a little Angostura in there, we might have something to, uh, <laughs> something to talk about here. See if that helps it have a little life. It's definitely better. Jimmy, you let me down on this one and I'm sorry to say it, but this drink is kind of boring. It is a palatable, I mean, like it's a drinkable rum delivery mechanism, but it's not a very exciting cocktail. Boat drink, the boys in the band ordered boat drinks, boat drinks. Waitress, we need three more rounds of boat drinks. Something to keep my warm, yeah. Boat 
Drinks is a song I like a lot. And the thing about it is that there's a drink in it that's non-specific. So it was an opportunity for me to actually create a drink. So this is the original drink that will show up in this episode, the boat drink, I've named it. And I know what you might be thinking if you're really well versed in the sailing culture. Hey, boat drink, shouldn't that be a painkiller or maybe a gimlet if you're from the 1700s? The answer is yes. And so we'll make a painkiller after this. But first we're gonna make my own creation, the boat drink. Let's start with one ounce of lime juice. Here we go. In my tin, half an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of maraschino. And why maraschino? Well, one, it's delicious. Two, I'm drawing a little bit on the Hemingway daiquiri here, which includes maraschino, because Mr. Hemingway was a man who was a fan of drinks on his boat, man, boat drinks, and I felt like that would be an appropriate reference. Also, Key West, very closely associated with both Hemingway and Jimmy Buffett. I want three ounces of rum, and we're gonna do it crazy up. We're gonna do uh, one ounce of Hamilton 86, Demerara. We're gonna do one ounce of Plantation 5 here. Very nice blend of rums. And now we want an ounce of Plantation Pineapple Stiggins Fancy. This is Plantation Rum that's been rested on pineapples. We want some mint. I bought this mint today, it's already wilting. Isn't that great? Not too much, just five or six mint leaves will be good. And now we're gonna shake that up. You know, at one point I thought I would be able to have some half-baked fruit cake out here, but it did not happen for the show. Okay, ice goes in. Crack this one up. Oh, I totally forgot. This recipe calls for three dashes of Angostura bitters. Uh, there's mint in there. The, the shaking is gonna muddle it. We don't need to muddle the mint in, on top of that. I'll strain that right in. Why am I straining it? Because I don't really want all that mint pulp in there. Garnish that with a little mint. And this is a drink I call boat drink. Oh. Oh, that's one of the best drinks I've ever invented for the show. This drink has such a complicated, delicate set of flavors. And yes, I sound very pompous saying that, particularly about my own drink. I, I'm floored by it, honestly. It is, of course, fresh, bright, and minty. There's a wonderful interplay here between the sour and the sweet. And then the way that mint and maraschino interact, it produces this kind of very fresh, very herbal flavor that is, I mean, it leans into the direction of chartreuse in a weird way, or, or Benedictine. In a lot of ways, this drink feels like a cousin to a Singapore sling. Here's a true fact about how to drink and about bartending. Sometimes I work out a recipe on paper. I, I figure out what I think is gonna be a good drink. And then while I'm shooting the show, I will revise that drink in real time. That is what just happened. This is one of the best drinks I've ever had. It was written up on paper, never tested, revised in real time. I, I looked at what my notes said and I included some of it and I changed some of it. And it's one of the best damn drinks I've ever had. I will actually make this drink again. There's a lot of drinks on the show that are kind of stunty. They're too big to make again. They're too complicated. And I, I lean towards simpler things when I'm hanging out with friends and, and my wife. Boat drink is a drink I will make again. And I submit it as the official boat drink of boat drinks. Something to keep them all warm. But there is a drink that is extremely associated with boating, sailing. If I had to name you the boat drink prior to my creation of it, I would think of the painkiller, which is a drink that was invented at the Soggy Dollar Bar, which is a spot that is famous amongst sail cruisers who hang out in the Caribbean and cruise their sailboats from island to island. The Soggy Dollar Bar, so named because you have to swim in and pay with soggy dollars. And if you like pina coladas, and if you like getting caught in the rain, and if you're not into yoga, and if you have half a brain, you will love a painkiller because a painkiller is basically like a better version of a pina colada. So let's make one right now. You're gonna start with one ounce of orange juice. Then you want a somewhat absurd sounding four ounces of pineapple juice. You want an ounce of coconut cream, and I think that Real or Coco Lopez is fine. You can also make your own. I don't usually bother to do so. And then you want two ounces of rum or more, if you prefer. And the rum you're supposed to use is Pusser's rum. They have copywritten 
this drink. I don't oh, like that. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. you can use any rum you want in this drink, but they'll sue me for telling you that. God damn them to hell. It's a fine rum, by the way. It's great rum. There's nothing wrong with it. It's really wonderful rum. Here we go, two ounces of Pusser's rum. There we are. So let's get some ice in here and shake this sucker up. And let's pour a painkiller. Oh, I wish I had a pencil thin mustache. The boss and blackie kind. A two-toned Ricky Ricardo jacket. And an autographed picture of Andy Devine. Then you garnish it with fresh nutmeg. I know, it's crazy, right? And you want to do that in the tempo of like a samba. And there you have it, a painkiller, one of the most divine drinks of all creation. You know, it's funny. I've never made one with Pusser's Rum before now. They might be better with Pusser's Rum. This has a lot of the flavor profile of a pina colada. It's got the rum, it's got the cream of coconut, it's got the pineapple, but it's combined in different proportions. It's not blended. It has orange juice. It has nutmeg. It has a totally different ratio. This drink is heavy and dark and mysterious and spiced and really, truly exotic tasting. It tastes like something from another time and place. It's not like a pina colada. A pina colada tastes like an all-inclusive resort in Jamaica it tastes like sandals. This tastes like, I don't even know. This tastes like a pre-code movie about a woman in distress on the run from Louisiana down in Havana. I'm thinking, of course, of Safe Harbor in Hell. This tastes like Safe Harbor in Hell or Red Dust, if you prefer. And if you're into movies, why don't you check out my movie podcast that I do with Meredith? Uh, Midnight Local, links around, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is, this is awesome. I love a painkiller. I think I had a couple last night, or at least the night before. There's so much in here that wants to be sweet, but the drink somehow holds it back so that it's not overly sweet. It is a approachable, drinkable, I mean, drainable. You could drink these quick drink a tropical vacation oriented cocktail that feels and tastes sophisticated and refined and cultured like it's a worldly drink the final drink today is a bama breeze which is named after a jimmy buffett song the recipe for the drink was created by lucy buffett his sister so let's make it i've never had this drink i'm very excited by it you're gonna take two lime wedges and throw them into the bottom of your shaker. You're gonna add half an ounce of simple syrup, and then you're gonna muddle that, um, trying not to crush the peel of your lime too much. I feel like this is probably not necessary, that shaking will do this, but fine. I will do as Lucy dictates. There we go. Okay, so now we want an ingredient that I've never used before. Grapefruit vodka. Uh, we want three quarters of an ounce of this. Now we want three quarters of an ounce of coconut rum. Um, there's much better coconut rums out there. In fact, I had a bottle of coconut cartel, I think it is, that I really enjoyed. I don't know where it went. I couldn't find it. In truth, I do think that Lucy Buffett was talking about Malibu. So we're gonna use that instead anyway. Three quarters of an ounce of coconut rum, which makes sense. Cause I think that, you know, her Bama breeze is a riff on a Malibu Bay breeze. Her recipe now says that I should fill the shaker with ice and cranberry juice, um, and specifically cranberry juice enough to fill the shaker. I think that means I need a lot of ice, so there's not too much room left over for cranberry juice. Uh, normally I put my ice into the tall tin for reasons. We're gonna do it the way that Lucy wants me to today. I'm gonna crack all my ice here. I've got this cranberry juice. This is 100% cranberry juice, no sweetener, it's tart. She says I should fill my shaker. Lucy says I should garnish it with a lime. Here we go, this is Lucy Buffett's Bama Breeze. Wow, I would think that all of that cranberry juice would take over the drink, but in fact, Malibu coconut rum is so loud that it doesn't really get lost. The cranberry juice I happen to use is zero sweetness. It is 
bone dry, painfully dry. If you drink it, it hurts. And so that might be part of why this drink is so balanced. This is actually good. It is tart, bright, fresh, with a hint of sweet coconut. I think it could be stronger, but I understand it's just a breeze. It's just a breeze. Honestly, I have to give it full marks. It's delicious. I can find no fault. However, what if we added an ounce and a half of Demerara rum to it? You know, because like sometimes you want an ounce and a half of Demerara rum in a cocktail. Okay, so the first one might have been Lucy Buffett's Bama Breeze, but I like to imagine that this is Jimmy's Bama Breeze. Same kind of approachable vibe, but it descends into this netherworld. This kind of Hades of heavy, dark, Demerara, burn, sugar, jungle notes that I, I find super compelling. I can't resist the, uh, the allure of, honestly, this particular bottle, the Hamilton 86. Well, there it is, folks. An eight drink salute to Jimmy Buffett. I mean, are there contemporary musicians, artists who have had more influence on me and this show? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Jimmy Buffett is deep in the DNA of how to drink and myself. So I am of course deeply saddened uh, at his passing as are we all. But I think, I think Jimmy would want us to all have a good drink and a good time and to love each other and to keep the carnival going. Be half-baked fruitcakes crossing the street naked I think that's what he would want. So, to all the Parrot Heads, to Jimmy, to the world, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs>